Never give up on something you can't go a day without thinking about. That was from Winston Churchill. That applies to all of you out there who are trying to get your health in order and are trying to get going on the carnivore diet. It's not good advice for those of you who are stalkers. Hey, what's shaking bacon? My name is Bruno Panucci. I hope you're doing well. So this video is for people who are having a rough time bringing carnivore to the level they need it to be at, whether it's for weight loss or whether it's just for general health or just upping your game. Tell me what obstacles you've had in your carnivore journey and how you overcame them in the comments. A couple weeks isn't going to give you the solid foundation of what it takes to become a carnivore. It takes a while to get that sugar craving out of your body. Now, if you don't have sugar cravings, then that's not too much of an issue for you. But you have to give yourself time to adapt. Yes, a month is good enough to get rid of all the negative side effects of starting a carnivore diet. Uh, the withdrawals, the diarrhea, the headaches you get for the first few days, your electrolytes being out of balance. But it's not long enough to feel all the benefits. So what do you do when you're trying to start this and you're having a rough time to just keep consistent at it? I have quite a bit of experience with this. I've been doing carnivore strict for well over two years and I was doing carnivore not so strict on and off, just like a lot of people out there for a few years before that. Yes, a few years. It took me a while to get consistent at it. It's something I eventually learned to do and I hope you can get there one day too and I hope this video helps you get there. So before that, I did zero carb on and off for a few years from a doctor I was seeing in Toronto a few years ago. That was the first time I ever came across zero carb and carb addiction and it was the first time it really opened my eyes to that being an actual thing, something that existed. I didn't know that existed before that. So the one thing you wanna keep in mind is to have a plan. Get rid of all temptations. You don't wanna have all these snacks in the house if you can help it when you're trying to start a restricted way of eating. It's gonna feel restricted in the beginning, but after a while, you're not gonna feel restricted at all. Those cravings will go away and you can sit in front of that food and not have any cravings for them. So you might have to ask for the support and help of your family. And you know, as much as you wanna say a four-year-old or six-year-old doesn't understand, you know what they do understand? They don't want mommy and daddy to be sick anymore. They wanna make sure that their mommy and daddy are happy and helpful and they wanna support you. They want you to be healthy. They want you to be around for a long time. So having your children as a reason or excuse to not be strict because that's your downfall. Having say peanut butter in your house or candy or different things like that or just carbs or fruit, things that are gonna tempt you, your family will understand. They will want to help you. Now they may do it begrudgingly. You may have to make some compromises, but they will help you and you need their support. So go to your family and get rid of all these temptations you have lying around. If stopping by a fast food restaurant on your way back from work is something you typically do, take a different route home. Create a new habit to get out of that old habit. I used to do that myself all the time. I had to start taking a different way home to get out of the habit of going to the grocery store where I'd pick up my chocolate cake or my pizza. One thing that really helps is to know your day in advance, plan it. If you know what you're gonna be doing tomorrow or even for the next few days coming up, understand what you're gonna be doing, have a plan to try and figure that out so, so that you're not gonna have reasons to mess up. You gotta have food ready and prepped for those days. If you're having a lot of red meat, you might find that you can go longer windows of time without having to have any snacks or treats of any kind. So maybe red meat might be the way for you to go so that you don't get hungry in between your meals, assuming you're not having snacks throughout the day, carnivore snacks that is. If you're trying to do just one meal a day in the beginning, I highly suggest you not do that. That is not a safe thing to do because you're waiting for feast or famine. You're waiting till you're hungry and then that last few hours before it's time to eat, that's when you're gonna slip up, most likely. So I don't recommend doing that. Have at least two to three meals in a day, at least. They can be smaller meals. Smaller meals are gonna give you a smaller insulin bump. A high fat meal is also gonna give you a smaller insulin bump. Have food in your fridge at work if you can. Have snacks close by. Keep a Tupperware container close by wherever you're working. Or even a Ziploc baggie full of some snacks. It's possible to have snacks on a carnivore diet, really affordable snacks that you can make at home and bring to work. We'll do another video on that. Another thing I want you to do is plan for hiccups. You know, you plan for the day, you plan on being at work, but you know what? You ended up doing some overtime. You ended up staying at work through your lunch or maybe after work or having to go into work early. 
plan for those events. Have extra food on hand at work so that you can do that. Maybe you can keep some snack food in your car. Just have more food on hand than you need every day. And so what? You take it back home. Lots of people used to bring lunch boxes to work. How did that go out of fashion? Hiccups happen. Hiccups are a part of your day-to-day -day life. Here's the other thing. If you make a mistake, don't say to yourself, well, the whole day is ruined or the whole week is ruined or I'll start fresh next month. That's a negative way of thinking. That is how you set yourself up for failure. If you're thinking like that, reassess. If you made your mistake, accept it for what it was and at your next meal, move forward. Don't wait till the end of the day. Don't wait till tomorrow. Don't think, well, I've already had one chocolate bar. I might as well have three. Oh, well, well, I already had one chocolate bar. I might as well just order food at lunch with everyone else when they all get junk at lunch. Don't do that to yourself. The next thing you need to do is analyze your mistakes. If you have to figure out what you did so that you can correct that and prevent it from happening again. It's not a mistake if you learn from it. It's a learning experience. It's making you better at what you're trying to accomplish. You have to stop punishing yourself when you make these mistakes. These mistakes are there for a reason. They're there for you to learn from. You can do better than this. You can prevent that from happening by making sure that that doesn't happen again. Or if it does happen again, you have an option available for you so that you don't slip up. That's not asking too much. That's not even too much work when you go into it prepped. The better prepped you are hour to hour, day to day, week to week, is the better chance you're going to have of being able to stick with carnivore to the level you're satisfied at. You don't need to be 100% carnivore if that's not something that works for you. Maybe you can go 95% with your carnivore and that's good enough. You can have an apple here or there and it doesn't keep cravings alive. It's just enough variety in there for you to not feel like you won't hate the rest of your life. If carnivore, strict carnivore, is too difficult for you, don't force that on yourself. If it's something you know you need, well, maybe you have to work towards it. Maybe you have to have that discipline to make it happen. But if you're one of those people that can handle a little bite of a piece of cake or a little bite of a cupcake or something that the kids are having when they offer it to you, or you just want it because you're a grown adult and you can make your own decisions, then do that. But be honest with yourself. If you're one of those people that if you do that and you're going to do it 10 times a day, that's not how this works. That's not how a healthy diet works. That's not how a healthy lifestyle works. If the people who do those things do those things, they've earned those things. Usually with a lot of exercise. They don't look at it as a punishment. They look at it as a trade-off. Start looking at it a little more like that. And last but not least, you don't want to reward your mistakes. Well, what does that mean? Well, and I touched on this a little bit earlier. You know, you think to yourself, I've already screwed up for the day. Well, I might as well just keep at it. That's your sugar addiction talking for you to just have a free for all. And maybe you can start again next week. And you're just going to keep pushing that start date, that restart date over and over and back and back so that you can keep keeping your addiction alive. That's what it is. It's your addiction. And you're rewarding it with bad behavior, with a negative mindset. You don't have an eating problem. You have a thinking problem. When you're looking at your relationship with food and you have something that you shouldn't have eaten on that diet and that throws you right off and you decide you can't stick with this carnivore diet for the rest of the day or the rest of the week or you're going to start fresh again next week, you have a thinking problem. You're an all or nothing thinker. That's not how it works. Get back on track with your next meal. You don't want to keep rewarding yourself by throwing yourself off track and rewarding that sugar addiction so that you can continue to have that junk food and it'll take longer to get your health back under control. Don't do that to yourself. So this is just a few ways you can work towards never giving up and having a plan, getting everything together so you can move forward with your carnivore journey. You know what you need to do to have a good environment to set yourself up for success. Do that. Don't give up. Keep working at it. If you know this is something you need to do to increase your quality of health, don't stop. I've had roadblocks. I'm still having a roadblock. I've been, a, I've been at a weight plateau for months now months and if anything i'm starting to go the other way because i've tweaked what i'm doing with a higher fat diet i knew a little bit of weight gain would come along with that but typically what happens is more weight loss than what you gained and that's part of the solution sometimes sometimes your body has to adjust if you're hitting walls in this path you're in going towards a healthy lifestyle and a healthy way of eating with a zero carb way of eating just respect the fact it's okay to ask for help. It's okay to seek out the help of professionals and other people out there that are further along in their carnivore journey than you are. That's what they're there for. Thanks a lot. Hope you subscribe. Thanks a lot and take care.